And uh, this is a going to be a wonderful Monday morning because we're going to be talking about something that everybody is involved with or will be or should be or might be, an aggregation or an aggregator or clusters or whatever like that. Our interviewee is Bruce Cochran. I've known Bruce for many years. He came in the business in 19... 76 with his dad's agency and they built it up it was a really good agency and they were members of ours and personal friends and it, it, it was just a great opportunity and in 1999 Bruce started something called the Renaissance uh, Alliance and it is really really uh, the one of the top uh, aggregations or aggregators that you have ever well that we have in, in the United States or anywhere as far as I'm concerned and I was really felt lucky to have Bruce with us he was even president of the uh, Board of uh, Underwriters, Bruce, is that the name of it, in Boston? The Board of Fire Underwriters, yeah. Boston, yeah, okay, thanks. Well, at any rate, I mean, it's just a, it's just a tremendous opportunity for, for, uh, for us to, to, to really learn out what's going on. About that. What is an aggregation, Bruce? Well, you know, aggregations are nothing new. I mean, we, agencies have been getting together to share uh, common interest for a long time. I mean, way back in the 60s and 70s, we had most of the carriers were rep represented by uh, managing general agents, and they provided brokers, individual brokers, with desks in their offices and allowed the brokers to share all the resources of the larger organization. And and then uh, uh, later on, individual when individual agencies started to form groups to do all kinds of things, to collaborate on all kinds of things. And then in the 90s. Uh, we, the, the buzzword was clusters. Okay, so the word aggregation is really today's iteration of the form, uh, the, the other things we used to we call groupings, whether it be groupings or clusters and so forth. And basically, uh, an aggregation is just a group of independent agents who band together for a common purpose. Simple enough. Well, you know, we see these agency groupings of all types. They pop up more and more these days. I see them everywhere. Uh, they must have. There must be a need in the marketplace for them. Can you put in perspective why agency groupings have become so popular? Well, it's pretty simple, George. Uh, we'd like to say that the, the two strengths of the independent agency system are independence, of course, and uh, locality. Locality, of course, gives us the ability to develop those relationships, which is where it is the heart and the soul of independent agency system. However, on the other side of the coin, the two Achilles heels of independent agents are, guess what? Independence and locality. And the reason for that is, of course, that uh, in those two things uh, sort of box agents in and don't allow them to create the kind of scale that's needed to compete in today's fast-moving business world. Uh, we're forced to become generalists, and we wind up with limited resources to attract specialized expertise and to keep up with the rapidly changing business practices and technology. Um, well, there's a few challenges around, that's for damn sure. Well, you know, independent agents are faced with enormous challenges requiring sea changes in the way we conduct business. For instance, uh, technologi technology and systems, you're just swirling all around us. The world is changing so fast, it's blinding in terms of its speed. Um, Internet, social networking, Th this is a huge one. Uh, this is one that in which we're all going to have to make uh, a world of changes, and really the world is turned upside down when you really take a look at it. We're moving from a carrier and producer-driven world to a consumer-driven world. And so the changes are coming from a top-down to a bottom-up. And guess who's in the middle? Independent yeah, agents. It's just a, for practically impossible for agents to stay up on top of all that stuff, all right. unless they've got... 15-year-old kids or something, huh? But yeah, this, anyway. is big, this is the biggest change. Yeah, and, and of yeah. course, there are huge threats to our commissions going forward. Competition coming from all sides, and these are just insurance companies, but everybody thinks that selling insurance is a nice, easy thing to do that generates revenue, and, and that's just going to go get more and more as we go along. Uh, depleting revenues. For example, auto insurance is the largest line of business in most agents' offices, and yet we're going to see the dramatic drop in premium, of course, and premium drops, commission drops, over the next five to ten years from the continued commoditization of this product and uh, exposure reductions, meaning reductions in collisions brought about by such things as robotics, robot cars, and the uh, stringent enforcement of traffic safety initiatives. Um, 
we're going to see, we're seeing an erosion or have seen an erosion of sales capacity. I mean, the best salesperson in most agencies is the principal. But a business these days is more complicated to run. Principal has to wear many hats. Technology, systems, personnel, even carrier management. As a result, principal's valuable time is getting diverted from sales to administration. As a result, we've seen a steady erosion in agency sales capacity over the past 20 years. Uh, operational inefficiencies, the lack of actionable scale that local independent agents have today or don't have uh, creates enormous inefficiencies. And that's not even to mention all the carrier tasks that have been pushed down uh, or offloaded by carriers to agencies in the past 10 years. Uh, lack of organizational agility. I mean, many agents are stuck in organizational neutral. Uh, we're, we're wedded to an outdated model, seriously flawed to face the fundamental challenges of the 21st century business world. The irony is that this old way of doing business was what made today's successful insurance agencies a success, making it tougher for them to embrace the type of changes necessary. And there's this old Peter Drucker quote, whom the gods wish to destroy, they send 40 years of prosperity, right? Oh, yeah, um, there's no question about it. So, it's, you know, uh, the, the challenges that agents have, in, in these challenges, here are a number of things that we have to do in this new world. Because of competition, competition is continuing to uh, raise the bar, we have to continually add to the value of proposition uh, to order to stave off disintermediation, okay, uh, or yeah. in some cases stave off becoming irrelevant. We have to develop proficiencies in data management. This is the big one. We're going to talk about this a little bit more down the road here. Um, we need to broaden deliverable services, meaning we have to expand our revenue base. Where is it written in the scriptures that independent agents can only sell insurance? I, I scratch my head on that one all the time. Uh, oh, we have, yeah, we have to master the social media world, uh, digital world. We talked about that a little bit. but. We really need to be able to enable our agencies to refocus on the only two cri mission critical activities for insurance agencies, and that is, ta-da, sales and delivering raving fan service. I like that. It's that, that, that. raving fan. That's a, that's a good right. one. What's the overriding purpose of an ag aggregation? Can you put it into simplicity here? Yeah, I think it's pretty simple. I mean, it, it really is to combine the resources uh, of agencies to achieve together what can't be achieved by standalone agencies while maintaining the independence of the individual agency participants. That's a key part. Well, we talked about this the other day. You, you mentioned uh, prior to starting Renaissance Alliance, you did some research on the characteristics of uh, successful aggregations. There weren't very many of them. Were there. What'd you find? Well, yeah, that was back in the 1990s. Of course, clusters, as we said before, was the buzzword. And what we really found was that there were three common characteristics among the successful aggregators. Number one, they had a vision. More than just sharing markets and profit share. You know, where are we going to take this thing? Uh, Full-time professional management. I mean, when you bring together a group of agencies, at some point in time you realize in order to be able to achieve efficiencies and economies, you want to do something centrally or together. And therefore, someone needs to manage the central operations. Uh, what we found was that the more full-time an expert was the central management of these groups, meaning the leadership, uh, the more successful the aggregations were in creating truly differentiating advantages for their member agencies. Uh, these advantages don't just materialize out of thin air. Uh, and the third part was, of course, capital. You need capital in order to, to uh, fund the centralized operations. The problem is that the, the typical independent agency has little or no capital sitting on, on its balance sheet. That's for sure. So, so when we when we formed Renaissance Alliance, we did so with these characteristics in mind. Wow. Well, this is. But you know, there's so much here. Let's go to. Uh, uh, let's let's end it right now for this morning, and let's. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, we'll start in another few minutes, but we'll do the part two, and we'll send it out to everybody tomorrow morning, which is Tuesday. Uh, I think that's a, the best way to do it, Bruce, don't you? Because we'll, there's, there's so much good information in here, I hate just to, to uh, have people stop. So if you, if you 
just make sure you look in tomorrow morning. And uh, Monday morning, it'll look the same and everything else. It'll say part two. And it's a little bit longer, but there's a lot of really good information in there. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, we will definitely be back to you tomorrow morning with a whole lot of good stuff that every agent should know because I believe Bruce has convinced me that almost every agency, regardless of size, can be better off with some sort of an aggregation, aggregator, cluster, or whatever you may call it. So stay tuned till tomorrow.